Louis de Broglie was a French physicist and aristocrat who made groundbreaking contributions to quantum theory. He was born at Dieppe in France on 15th August 1892. The son of Louis Alphonse Victor Duc de Broglie and Pauline de Arma. He had four siblings and they were Albertina, Philippe, Lore Mary and Morris. Morris was also a physicist. He acceded to the title of Duc de Broglie on his father's death in 1906. Louis de Broglie was youngest in the family and grew up in relative loneliness. He read a lot and was fond of history. From early childhood, he had good memory and could accurately read an excerpt from theatrical production or give a complete list of ministers of the Third Republic of France. A good future as a statesman was predicted for him. De Proy completed his high school from Lycée Janson de Sailly in Paris in the year 1909. De Proy has intended a career in humanities and received his first degree in history. Afterwards, as his liking for science prevailed, he studied and received a degree in physics in the year 1913. During the First World War, he was posted to the wireless sessions of the army. During this period, he was stationed at the Eiffel Tower where he devoted his spare time to study the technical problems. At the end of the war, Louis de Broglie resumed his studies of general physics. While taking an interest in the experimental work carried out by his elder brother Maurice and co-workers, he specialized in theoretical physics and in particular in the study of problems involving quanta. In 1924, at the Faculty of Sciences at Paris University, he delivered a thesis researches on the quantum theory, which gained him his doctor's degree. This included the wave particle duality theory of matter, based on the work of Max Planck and Albert Einstein on light. Einstein stated that light can have particle-like or wave-like properties depending on the experiment. This was restated for matter particles by de Broglie. The wavelengths associated with electrons of any matter particle can be found by taking Planck's constant divided by the momentum of that matter particle. Before this discovery, lots of ideas and formalisms in quantum mechanics that the people didn't completely understand existed. But they all worked for some reasons. Now, when the de Broglie theory came into picture, the all ideas and formalisms can be proven. For example, we can take the idea of de Broglie and show how Bohr's atomic model really works. The allowed orbits were formed by constructive interference and the forbidden orbits are formed by destructive interference. After de Broglie's paper, Schrodinger came around and basically set a stage for the entire quantum physics. His work was heavily influenced by the ideas of Louis de Broglie. Next, we will see a part of an interview with Louis de Broglie where he is asked about his theory and the thought process behind it. C'était le résultat de très longues réflexions. En 1905, quand j'avais 13 ans, M. Einstein avait découvert que dans la lumière, il y a non seulement des ondes, comme on le savait depuis longtemps, mais aussi des corpuscules, ce qui lui avait permis d'expliquer l'effet photoélectrique qui n'était pas explicable jusque-là. Et puis j'avais étudié aussi beaucoup la théorie de la relativité. C'est à la suite de toutes ces études que j'ai eu l'idée qu'il fallait étendre à toutes les particules matérielles, et en particulier à l'électron, l'idée de la particule est accompagnée d'une onde. 
Ceci changeait profondément la mécanique des particules en ce sens que jusque-là, on pouvait, à l'aide de lois connues, euh, déterminer, euh, calculer, si vous voulez, la, la trajectoire des particules, tandis qu'après l'introduction de la mécanique ondulatoire, c'est à partir de la propagation de l'onde que la trajectoire des particules se trouvait déterminée, de telle sorte que certaines apparences ondulatoires apparaissaient même dans le cas des particules comme des électrons. Par exemple, si on a euh, un train, de très nombreux électrons associés à une même onde, il peut se faire dans certaines circonstances que les électrons se répartissent d'une façon qui corresponde à des phénomènes de diffraction qui sont bien connus pour la lumière. Et c'est justement à la vérification de l'existence de ces phénomènes de diffraction qui a permis en, 1929, euh, en 1927... As and fully confirmed by the discovery of electron diffraction by crystals in the year 1927 by Davison and Germer. They served as the basis for developing the general theory nowadays known by the name of wave mechanics, a theory which has utterly transformed our knowledge of physical phenomena on the atomic scale. And finally, Louis de Broglie was awarded the Nobel Prize in the year 1929 for his great discovery. This was the fifth Solvay conference which was held in the year 1927 and prominent physicists from all over the world met to discuss about the newly formulated quantum theory. Louis de Broglie was also present in the Solvay conference. After the maintaining of his thesis and while continuing to publish original work on the new mechanics, Louis de Broglie took up teaching duties. On the completion of two years free lectures at the Sorbonne University, he was appointed to teach theoretical physics at the Institute Henry Poincare, which had just been built in Paris. Between 1930 and 1950, Louis de Broglie's work has been chiefly devoted to the study of various extensions of wave mechanics, Dirac's electron theory, the new theory of light, the general theory of spin particles, applications of wave mechanics to nuclear physics, etc. He has published numerous notes and several papers on this subject and is the author of more than 25 books on the field of his particular interest. De Broglie got several other awards in accordance with the Nobel Prize. In 1929, he got Henry Poincare Medal. In 1932, he got Albert I of Monaco Prize. In 1938, he got Max Planck Medal. Also in 1938, he was a fellow in Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. In 1944, he was a fellow of Académie Française. In 1952, he was awarded with the Kalinga Prize. And in 1953, he was a fellow in the Royal Society. He was also influential in creating the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Louis de Broglie died on the March of 1987 in Lucienne, France at the age of 94. His contributions to wave mechanics have paved the way for further advancement and led to the creation of many modern technologies. I would like to end the documentary by quoting the words of Louis de Broglie. The actual state of our knowledge is always provisional and there must be beyond what is actually known immense new regions to discover.